Hello, everyone. My name is Fabrizio Fresco. I joined the HP one year ago. I work in the professional service team based in Galway, Ireland. We are here today speaking about Freezer. It's kind of a new project launched by HP. A little bit of history. When HP started to implement his own public cloud, a lot of people, different teams working on deployment. And uh, as a lot of new things implemented, they started kind of not very well synchronized, and each one of the teams was solving his own backup problem in, in very different ways. This was causing problems because a lot of duplication of code, a lot of efforts and maintenance problem, bugs discovered, and all these classical operational things. And then they started to implement checks about the consistencies of the backup that runs every a couple of months. And they had a, a very bad news because as expected, there were many inconsistencies trying to restore. Not all is working in the way they were expecting. So we started to investigate possible already done solution, and we couldn't find a cloud-oriented backup application available at the moment. So we, we started with, with development. We started to um, coordinate things between the different teams, the engineering, the operations, the ops auto, and so on. And so we were embracing the open source community and we wanted to, to be more present. So this, this project has been open source since the beginning. And uh, reusing or leveraging all the functionalities or library that OpenStack provided us. At that point, our customers, I am professional service, so our customers were having absolutely the same problems and uh, they liked the idea. They started, started making requests and giving feedback and testing the solution. So they wanted Windows, for example, they, they pushed really hard the idea of the disaster recovery capabilities. And all these things motivated us quite a, quite a lot. So in, in, in our public cloud, we started the, the, the tests and the, the, the first addressed problem, that's kind of a classical one our CI CD platform that's quite huge for internal use mainly and each each node have kind of 400 key nodes half terabyte of data the classical difficult solution for for the backups because the change rate is quite high the incremental is kind of a challenge at the same time, even some customer wanted uh, to solve quite similar problems, mainly telcos using the cloud at that, at that moment for internal use, for NFE and so on, but even for storage 
for the very critical data in reality. Our feedback was really important for us. It was the, the, the things that pushed us to really put a lot of effort in this, in this project. So, as today, we have that deployment in, in Helium 1.1, and there is a, a, it's under evaluation at the moment, the inclusion of Freezer in, in Helium 2.0 that's in development currently. Uh, all these requests, all the things, so we wanted to learn from our own mistakes and we started to design uh, an arch arch architectural goals that we, we wanted to achieve. So the, the idea was to, to have a solution, a unique one for the, the OpenStack infrastructure for the virtual machines or even for the normal computers, let's say laptops or workstations or, or whatever. The, as a backup solution, data integrity is our focus completely because from our own mistakes, we realized that having a lot of backups of useless data, it's, it's not worth One, one thing that OpenStack couldn't help us very much is that uh, uh, we wanted to move the, the workload away from the infrastructure because in, 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 on the customer side, they have big implementations with a lot of data and uh, generating backups during the night or at the same time resulted in kind of a denial of service over the internal OpenStack control nodes. We, we have a lot of object storage, so the, 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 since the beginning we wanted to use that for, for the backups. It's redundant, it's easy to distributed over multiple sites. So we, think we thought that it was the, the way to go. And so we, we love OpenStack and we wanted to, to, to do something for helping OpenStack go to the users, not waiting for the users to go to OpenStack or, or leave OpenStack only to the operators and not the end users. And so the, the request and the challenges grow. They, they started asking to, to provide a point in time backup of the entire infrastructure. This, as you can imagine, is kind of a, a, a big problem because uh, it's a lot of data to a lot of I.O., a lot of transfers and it's, it's, it's not an easy problem to solve. And then, even better, they wanted to be able to restore everything in, ca in case of a disaster in one data center, for example, in another one, at least part of the infrastructure, the more critical pieces. So uh, once this was defined, we realized how big the problem is in the technical perspective, because because it's it's OpenStack, as I said, it's it's not helping a lot. There is no automatic automated way of generating the consistencies, the caps volume or images, whatever it is. Uh, the, the file systems won't, won't help us a lot because you can sync the file system, but 
you can't forget about the applications. The, the, the easy backup is, the, there are a lot of solutions commonly on, on the market, on the open source world, or whatever, but we wanted to solve more than only this simple problem. So we, we started to implement different strategies from the most simple, as I said, flash syncing the, the, the file system and then backing up a simple directory tree. But, uh, but then we started to, to, to do something better. We started to uh, interact with the application, can be your databases or whatever, try to, to flash what's maintained in memory and taking more consistent backups. This obviously came with a cost, it's not free. And uh, the main idea is to leverage the potentiality over the files. So everything is a file at the end, interact at least as possible with the application, and then work on the files directly. So then the next step was to have multiple choices over the efficiency of, of the solution. Because in some cases we want to have very fast backups, low uh, CPU usage, and, uh, and we, we, we thought that there is already something that do this, that it's, it's star, so it's such an old technology, it's tested and it's, it's there since 20 years or more. But, uh, but customer wanted more advanced solution, they wanted to be able to, to have a more bandwidth or, or um, sites efficient solution. And after a lot of brainstorming, we came to the, to the, to the point that probably the air sync way of working was the most intelligent one. So it's, it's kind of a different strategy, it's a lot more uh, CPU intensive and memory and slow, obviously. We, we had requests about automating the image backups in Nova or Cinder, and uh, no, uh, Glance didn't help a lot. The only thing that's possible to do there is to create an image from a VM, and uh, Glance have no idea what's happening inside of the VM, so with that, with this alone, it's 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 sometimes completely useless as a backup because not not even the file system gets synced inside of the VM. This is very often a big problem. On the Cinder side, it's a little bit more advanced because Cinder already provides the backup, can do compression, can do kind of the duplication, and even encryption recently. But again, the problem was the same, no, no consistencies inside of the VM. So our main user cases that we could figure out, we started tracking the most used application, thinking about how many LAMP uh, platform are implemented inside of OpenStack these days. And MySQL was well, a kind of a classical problem to be addressed. There are some solutions in the market, but anyway, none is automatic and easy and and not cloud-oriented. We wanted the object storage for, 
for storing our data. So MySQL, we, after a lot of evaluation, we, we realized that probably the best way to go is to interact with the database, connecting to the database, locking, locking it, flashing the tables, flashing the file system, and take the snapshot of the file system. At that point, we can remove the lock and everything go on quite well. There is no downtime, strictly speaking, but uh, it's only a small interruption of the writes. This is sometimes not acceptable anyway, but uh, even if the other solution can do a lot better than that. We can, you, can, you can have your, uh, let's say, standby replica dedicated for backup, so you can take the, the data from there and you will not interrupt your service. MongoDB, for example, is quite a lot easier because you already have an internal uh, journaled way of working. So we know that f flashing the syncing, let's say, the file system is an og for have the binary files in a consistent state. In Windows, we have the big problem of SQL Server, but with the same strategy we used for MySQL was mainly a no. So you can lock your database, flush it, take your snapshot using VSS, that almost the same thing as LVM in Linux, and, and work from there. We are working on the Elasticsearch. It's widely used. We have it in Helion by default. So uh, again, the same strategy, different terms, but it's the same as MySQL. We can lock the database, take snapshot, and work on, on the binary files. We. We are successfully using Freezer now since almost one year in our public cloud, and it's working. We are planning on the implementation of the OS X and BSD clients. We have some ideas, but we are defining the, the way to go. And then probably it was kind of a mistake not starting with, uh, with Cinder or Nova since the beginning. But uh, finally we realized that this is important too. So we have almost completed the backups leveraging Cinders. So uh, again, we have our client inside of the virtual machine. We can work to the application and then create backup in Cinder. Uh, without this, this kind of approach, it's, it's, it's very difficult to have useful backup with Cinder. There is even no way to have that automatically done by default. You can work through Horizon, but you have to go take the snapshot. You can't at the same time have sync the file system inside, and then create the backup, backup from the snapshot. If you have a lot of virtual machine, this kind of big effort. Obviously, you can work through the APIs, but you need to orchestrate everything, and you need to, to write your own script and, 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 and synchronize all the stuff by yourself. So we, we, we had that working already. It's in merge state. It's, it's going to be there very soon. And we have talked ab even about uh, doing more than what Cinder do of, of, of the volume during the backup because we received some 
request about having the chance to manage all the keys outside for the encryption outside of, of the cloud. The customer want to manage that by themselves. So here, the, the, the idea was to, after creating the snapshot, we can create an image from, from the volume and then download the image from Glance. This is not optimal, but it's impossible to get the volumes directly from, from Cinder, so the only way to go, we couldn't figure out better ideas. And with Glance, uh, we, we have to do everything in, on the outside because the, we can create snapshot of the, of the image, but it's, it's not encrypted, it's not compressed, no the duplication, nothing of this. So we, we create the image from the VM and we download that in, in, in Freezer. We do our, our processing and we store the backup in, in Swift. The, how, do, how do Freezer works in the reality? We wanted to, there, there is no space usually to store anything inside of the VM because it's, it's kind of illogic. It's really a lot of I.O. And it's really something that we didn't want to, to happen. So we, we, we leverage a lot the multiprocessing and, and and uh, pipelines, we use the Python pipes, so e each process or thread will do his piece of work, like the compression or the encryption or the, the duplication, and then pass through the pipe to the other processes that will do the sequent uh, work in the chain and then at the end copy it directly in, in, in the object storage. These have kind of a, a lot of advantage because it's almost no additional space required in the inside of the machine that's going to be backed up and um, only the snapshot that's really minimal and no additional space required for the restore of, of the backup. And the memory usage is, is quite low. It's not, not zero, but the world is, is not perfect. For, for the async way of, of, of working, we had really big problems because the standard their sync algorithm that there is no implementation in Python anyway uses both copies of the data the, the old one and the entire new file to be restored because it uses heavily the duplication so only once is chunk of data is stored over there and can be applied multiple times inside of the file to be restored. So it, it was almost impossible to, to proceed in that way. We, we struggled a lot to find a solution. And so far, the best idea we get was to split each big files in blocks of data we use this by default the same as seen that that's 50 megabytes and inside of each, each one of these block we apply the rsync algorithm that take uh, 16 kilobyte of blocks he he, he calculate a checksum and uh, we store all this information in the metadata and uh, we are able to, to compress it afterwards and, 
and uh, do the encryption, the duplication, and all the same stuff that the Ersync algorithm will allow us to do. This is not optimal, but we are still thinking in better solution. We have a few ideas, but uh, we are trying to write a proof of concept and see if the idea it's, it's at the end possible to be implemented. The big pictures, how, how do freezer work in the reality? It can, it, it, it can work alone. You install your client in your machine to be backed up, and it simply store your backup in Swift or an unmounted NFS file system or throw the data through a SSH machine with a storage attached. But we wanted more than these, obviously, so we started implementing the APIs. And with these APIs, we, we, we was able to implement a nice user interface for making things even more easy for the end user. So here on the left side, you have the, the freezer client. Could be whatever, as I say, the VM or a desktop or window, a Windows machine or a physical node. Uh, if you have the, the, the entire architecture implemented, you have to register the freezer APIs in Keystone in the catalog and deploy the client with a very basic configuration. That's mainly the username, the tenant ID, the password, and the keystone endpoint. At that point, the client will auto-register through the APIs. So it will show up in your user interface. And from there, you can create, apply your detailed configuration. We are using Elasticsearch as, as the storage for the configuration, the events, and all the metadata, metadata of, of, the, of the current backups. And we implemented a, a dashboard in Horizon for it's open stack. It's, it's, it's already there. What we have so far is a simple list of what we already had implemented. We can back up and restore from Zwift. We have the, the MongoDB journaled database functionalities, MySQL, SQL Server. We have the, the APIs that are working smoothly. We are still working on that, adding more, more functionalities. Once we have the functionalities in the API, we can, we can implement the, the, the user interface. We have the, the Windows client working in both ways, in the tar and rsync way. We have the encryption. We use SSL, so whatever kind of encryption we want, we can, we can use that. We have the incremental and the differential backup policies and the automatic removal after the expiration period is gone. We are actually working on, on, on the Cinder backups. It's, it's there, but need a lot more testing. We just started to implementation on in Glance, Nova Images, and in our priority there is a kind of more functionalities, the OS6 and BSD implementation. The, the 
capability of storing the backups in NFS or SSH or through SSH, creating multiple file system or directory trees in different file system in one passage, the concurrency prevention of the client and probably Oracle and SAP, and, and even we are trying to to have collaboration with other uh, product like the internal HP one that's data protector and we really want to have a, a mobile client implementation to be done a very nice idea would be even to have a, a workload migration between different technologies, but uh, it's, it's, it's not easy to, to achieve. Some screenshot of the actual user interface. As I said, we use Elasticsearch as a backend that allow us to create nice analytics about how things are going, the number of sources for backup, the failures, the size of the, of, of the files contained in the backups and some nice charts. This is the main view. You can, you can see all your uh, machines with the name, who is executing the backup, when I've been added to the to the to, to, to freezer and some more additional information, the number of backups, if there are broken links or or whatever. This is obviously in heavy development so things are changing quite quickly. This is the configuration management, as I said, new machine will pop up automatically over, over this dashboard and you can create new configurations or you can select one of the configuration like now it's the Elasticsearch one and you will see all the machines to whom the configuration is applied to. The status, if the last backup in this case there was no backup done, and you have the button to be able to restore automatically the, the backup on the machine. Here is the, the configuration creation. It's quite simple, configuration name, where in which container store data in Swift, the mode of the backup, if, if a simple file system or databases or whatever you're willing to backup and the, the source directory where the, the data is going to be backed up. You can choose the, the, the way of working, as I said before, if you want the speed one, the fast one, or the, or the space efficient. You can, you can choose the compression algorithm and, and the encryption. Here you will have all, all your uh, freezer client showing and you can apply the configuration to whatever client you want. The scheduling, when the backups are going to be taken, the, the hour and after how much time. And some more additional features like excluding some file patterns, or where to store the logs, or if you need a proxy to access the, your object storage. That's almost it. Here is where the, the code is. It's, we are in the OpenStack incubator in Launchpad. You, you can install Freezer directly from the PyPy repository 
And obviously, if you want to give some feedback or, or have bright ideas or you're willing to, to join the team and help us out, you're very welcome. That's it. If you have any question or File level. File level. So if I just want to restore one file. Yes. Okay, and there's a self-service UI that will allow me to Yeah, it's it's not yet implemented in the UI, but if if you do that in by hand, let's say you can restore only one file. That was a a recent request that we implemented quite recently, but it's it's okay. have have sense. Yes, so the idea here is to, to leverage the libvirt and, and uh, backing up the XML file of your virtual machine. So we, this is not done yet. As I said, the disaster recovery is something that we are working on and willing to do that. So we have the solution and we are working on the implementation. We will retrieve your XML. We can show you the network configuration of your virtual machine and, you, and we will provide you the way to change to the new addressing from there and restoring then the XML over the new compute node in the, in the new data center, let's say. It's, it's, it's not easy, so it's, it's something that we, we want to do and we are working on that. In which uh, release of OpenStack uh, can we use uh, Freezer? Which? Release of OpenStack. There's no restriction. The, we, we, we develop it in DevStack and it's the public, our public cloud is not completely Juno. So, but it, it's compatible with uh, Juno. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you mentioned that you're merging code for Cinder. <coughs> we we are not working on Cinder. We are using Cinder, leveraging all the functionalities that we can we can use that Cinder will provide us, but. We, we are not working in C in there. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.